Right folks, another little update. As you can see, I've made a start on my shed. Um, it's uh, the, 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 the carcass, the, the shell if you like, is up. Um, not level yet, it's not far out, but I've got to adjust that back corner. So yeah, this was an old shed that I was given. It was about 12 foot by 10 foot if I remember. Um, just have sort of bodged together, managed to get save all bits and cut them all up and make frames up. So it's <coughs> it's a shed at the end of the day. It's what where I'm going to put all my tools. Still a bit of a mess in this corner, taking them bushes down a bit. I'm just burning all the, the the brush that's come off of all trees. All good bits of wood I'll take home for my log burner. Um, not really done anything else as yet on the beds. There's my scaffold boards. There's 20 scaffold boards there. Um, five pound each, so I was very happy with that. <coughs> They're in good nick. Just need to strip all the metal off and uh, crack away. I'm gonna. I've decided I'm gonna do a series of small two foot wide beds down here. Um, same, same as that, full full sort of width. I think they'll be about 11 foot. But my thinking is, I need to keep my different kinds of raspberries, my taberries, my gooseberries, my rhubarb all separate. So I'm going to have a row, um, a, a, sorry, a, a, a thin bed, two two foot wide, I reckon. Like I say, like this, you know, built up level across here. Um, I'm going to still continue that there across the back of the fence because that's where the strawberries are going to go and my blackberries but across here so down there and my big fat fingers across there and, and I'm going to work my way up like that up to here I'm going to do raised beds a couple of foot wide so that I can keep me Autumn flower, autumn fruit in raspberries, separate from my summer ones, and then my tea berries. Um, if anybody grows tea berries, will you please put me a comment so that I can send you a message or two? Because they're only very, very small plants that I've got, but I don't know how how wide apart to space them. Some people say that they go like blackberries. Some people say that they go you know like raspberries so which and they're a mixture of both plant wise so I, I could just do it have a word I've looked on YouTube and to be honest there's 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 a few stuff on tea berries but not anything about sort of how to plant them because they're a bit straggly as well so I'm wondering if I can plant them a little bit deeper um and try and get some more shoots coming from under the ground uh, so if anybody's got tea berries, give us a shout. My garlic's coming up lovely now. Um, I've finally got my greenhouse all tidied and cleared out. So when I get back up this afternoon, I will uh, do a short video on that. As you can see, nobody else. Saturday, Saturday morning, I'm going to chuck it down tomorrow and there's nobody on the plot. Right, so... Um, I have done a few other little videos and I'm going to try and add them in. Um, I've got one, I've been first thing this morning and got a load of uh, composted bark. I have a, a big pile of composted bark that I can get my hands on. But like that it's going to have to be bagged and carted down here. So uh, I've also got, I'm a bit like uh, Mick Pontney, I have got a Ospo Evan. Um, I will do a video of that and show you. It's a massive Ospool mountain. I work at a college that has horses um, and also it's a cattle auction. So all the shavings with all the cow and sheep and Ospool and all Ospool and straw from our horses at work go in a big massive mountain. So I will try and get a video of that. Right, signing off for now. Ta ta for now. Well, folks, it's now Wednesday. Um, do you know? I don't even know what day it is. It's definitely Wednesday. 
Um, I came up on Saturday um, and put the the shed frame up, the shell up. Um, I've been up I've, it, with the weather looking so good. I've booked the day off today, so I've been here since half past eight this morning messing about. I'll just show you up here. You have to excuse me, I'm out of breath. I've been a little bit busy today, <clears throat> so I've just leveled all the shed up I've leveled it all up I'm gonna to have to fill in and put some bricks and things and I've put the ridge on and I've just been messing about and I've cut the templates for the rafters for the roof if you can just see there there's the front rafter and the back rafter I'll take them home um, and cut them at home up band so there is one sat up there a little one the front one that's just a spare so yeah this is my shed I'm starting to fill it with gunk already um, I've started on the compost bin I've just got <coughs> the back up and I've made a side like I say I tend to bash them apart and fill in all the gaps I will wrap some of that black visco in there, some of that thick black polythene. I will staple that inside there before I put anything in. Um, but I just want to start getting on with it. I'm having a nightmare with this little wall. This this wall at this side is just, it's absolutely knackered. It's really a scream cracker. It's falling apart. It's a rubble stone wall anyway. Down there it's, it's sort of a nice, I don't know if you can see, you know there's plenty of big stones in it so if it falls down I can rebuild it quite easy whereas it comes up here it starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller and it's literally just collapsed here I don't know if a person before has just kept throwing stones at it but behind here I've just I've just started to build sort of it back up as a little retainer and throwing little stuff over the top so I'll tie the old soil back so today I've also started on my fruit beds. I am really chuffed to bits to start getting some up put in. I mean, I'm not going to blare you, but look at that up there. That's ace. That's the sun. You know, if a lot of people don't see that much these days, well, it's finally out today and it's been ace. I've managed to get <coughs> this bottom raised bed in. Like I said, in the beginning of this video because I did one on Saturday and I'm going to add this on the end so <clears throat> these are there are 30 inches um, oh god what's that that's about 900 millimeters 90 centimeters so <clears throat> they are a bit tad over two foot wide nice and deep and I've actually got my autumn raspberries in so if you can see what I've done is I'm not right sure about this spent spent ops stuff as it as in around the actual roots of the plant. Oh look at that. Oh yes. Sorry, I, I'm getting excited now because there's buds and stuff coming. But I'm not 100 percent sure what this stuff's gonna be like around roots. So I've dug a little bit in, but what I've done is I've put composted straw around the plant itself and then around the edge in a really thick about three inch thick layer I've put the, the spent hops so my thinking being that the spent hops will rot away merrily nicely and put goodness into ground and it won't burn the roots uh, and the composted straw will just sit there as a nice mulch <clears throat> so as you can see I've put first bed second bed and that's just the side of the, the third fruit bed which will be retained now I didn't I've, I haven't got a lot of room here I mean I know it's a nice size you know I'm going to be able to get once I've put another bigger raised bed up there I'll have four five foot by twelve foot beds and then three or four of these and then possibly another one or two <coughs> wider beds but really once I've got all my fruit in if I had one of these long beds 
for the rhubarb and for the gooseberry bushes I'd have I'd be using up a lot of room so what I've done on against the wall at the end of each one of these I'm gonna I'm sticking a rhubarb so I've just planted it in a load of well rotted manure and then I've just mulched it with the composted straw I haven't put any hops in or around that um, this bed is going to be the summer fruit in raspberries now because of the lie of the land I'm gonna to have to go up another four inch which means I need to bring saw down and cut some so scaffolding boards in half so what I've done is I've just started to fill this bed and I, I slightly forked over the thick clay soil then I put in believe it or not six bags of the composted bark and two bags of the um, hops now you'll see at the end of this video where I've been to get my composted bark but believe it or not I got 22 bags 22 bags of this stuff on Sunday in the rain and it's beautiful stuff beautiful I got 22 bags so we brought 22 bags and we brought another 25 bags of rotted leaves os poo and straw I wanted to do a video of os poo mountain but by god it was not very well we're chucking it down so we braved the weather and got the gear but we couldn't get a video so everything you see there double it we're all down there this morning and I can't believe it's all gone in in them two beds there <clears throat> and and a couple of bags on this one I've managed to get rid of 20 bags of composted bark it just it goes nowhere you think you've got lots of compost and it just goes nowhere right I'm waffling on sorry about that so once I put another four inches on this then I'll top it off with some soil and some compost this is the the next bed the start of the next bed the wall and then again like I say another rhubarb in the end of there so that's it for now uh, I will add on to the end of this video the, the, the composted bark um, and Sid you'll meet Sid he always comes to say hello when I go and get it um, and I've had a bit of a tidy up so right hopefully if we have decent weather on Friday that shed will have a roof on a door on and some windows because I'm off in the afternoon and that's it folks I'll uh, speak to you soon bye bye for now well this is just a little quick video um, I'd like to introduce you to some of my mates where I live we have a heck of a lot of sheep um, and this is an absolutely wonderful pile of composted wood chips now every time a new bit's dropped off like I think you can see there um, behind Sid that's Sid the sheep say hello oh he's camera shy anyway this is what we end up with it's been here for a few years and it's absolutely beautiful stuff um, I have a couple of stashes of this stuff that I can get hold of and also uh, a massive ospo mountain um, like I've said the only problem with me is I've got to cart it down the hill for bloody miles I am so jealous of all you lovely allotment holders that can park your car right up against your plot and straight out boot well I've got to bag it all up and then cut it all down so I'll, I'll try and get over to Ospo Mountain um, I'm a bit like Mick Potney I've got a lovely big pile to play at not quite as composted as is but uh, that'll be hopefully later on this afternoon to get a few more bags bye for now right folks as promised my little greenhouse uh, I'll just come out here there you go 
there she is in all the dirty glory I, uh, I'm afraid I don't uh, clean it every year so I'm set up inside I met this little sort of grow sorry it's not me having a pee it's my filter system for my fish bond I have it in here so this is my little sort of grow tent if you like it's just bubble wrap uh, I've not got a lot in the moment I've only just started I've been so busy down at the allotment all I do is just drop that down like so and it just covers up and keeps my seedlings warm you can see there I've got me onion sets underneath uh, mouse traps because greedy little mice were nicking them so there's my thornless blackberries some little strawberries um, echinaceas I think is the correct term for them plants oh sorry I got a little bit excited there this is my potato peel experiment that one there and that one there and as you can clearly see I've got a little sprout coming through oh as you can tell I'm easily pleased I do apologize so I've also just got some dahlias a few more little strawberries and then a few other bits and bobs and these are my tear berries now like I say the little diddy spindly things um, I mean they have really come on in here in the last few days because I've got the heater on um, I just have a little electric heater as you can see down there so that's it really um, this I'm going to finish tidying it out I will do some videos on my pond like I say, that is part of the filtration system and anybody who who does know about ponds and koi ponds under there under that wooden thing is a vortex so normally I don't think you'd be able to see them the water there's a, an outlet at the bottom of, of the pond a four inch drain if you, I think you can just see it there around the water comes out of there underground <coughs> goes in at 45 degrees to that vortex round there and because of the motion of it spinning round on the inside of the drum all the poop and heavy stuff drops to the bottom so I've then got a pump in the top of it and then it pumps through the filter system so what actually happens is you're not pumping all the gunk from the bottom of your pond um, I think you can see one or two of my little babies there some of my koi that I've grown on from little dinky ones um, there's not really much going on in here as yet um, now in winter I actually put a pump inside the middle shelf there's a shelf about two foot deep believe it or not that there and it ain't that clean is four foot deep if you can see the circular drain that is actually four foot down so in the winter you need to keep the bottom layers of water warm so I put a pump in mid depth and then pump it in straight into the filters in the greenhouse and then it comes back in um, and that just keeps the water clean but the bottom layers it keeps them nice and warm for fish so I'll just quickly go around so there's me little bit of a bed I do love my, my birds, we get all sorts of birds coming here. Um, we have a little bed there with a, an acer, a, a nice Japanese maple that I was given. No, I don't have bees, that's my wormery. This is in construction, this is my wife's she shed. Um, basically, I've nearly finished it. Um, it was just a, a pergola but I've closed it all in with larch boards um, on the inside and outside and in the summer 
it's uh, it's red hot in this back garden. <clears throat> There's my little crocuses for my little doggies. I used to have two King's Child Cavalier Spaniels, one with 11 and one with 14. So they're in the garden and that's uh, the little flowers. So we do have a rose and a clematis that comes up that corner and that corner, but I've had to cut them back to do the she shed. I keep calling it a she shed because that's what my wife calls it. You've heard of man caves. Well, this is a she shed. I've got a little apple tree there. Now, I don't know what I'm doing pruning. Uh, I looked on YouTube. If anybody can spot anything wrong, feel free to tell me. Um, I'll know if I get any apples or not. So, that's the, the back garden. <clears throat> and the greenhouse and the sun flipping Nora <clears throat> so one last little look at my babies I don't know if you can see them there um, there's some koi, loads of goldfish and that's it for now so I'll add this to the end of the, the videos um, and hopefully get it posted tonight thank you very much, bye bye